All right. Uh, welcome to um, this. Uh, I don't. I don't have a name for it yet. But it's just uh, something that we're doing um, here at Lear Ten, just to you know expose um, black businesses and get their words to help other new black businesses possibly form during this time. You know, um, I'm joined today with uh, Malik Thomas. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Good. Man. How, you, how you how your company doing during this time? Um, we we actually doing well, slower, because um, manufacturers, but sales is up there. All right. Now tell the world what's the name of your company and what what uh what uh do you guys sell? All right. So um, my brand is called the Crown Collection, and we sell streetwear. So anything kind of contemporary, somewhat edgy. Um, and we we kind of cater to that market. Good deal, good deal. Uh, how did you? How did this business start? What was your inspiration behind it? You know, you you ran track, uh, and you know you do your your day job, but how did this idea persist and manifest itself? I always tell people um, when I was a child, I used to always watch music videos, and then. When my grandma got a computer, my mom didn't let me watch music videos. So at my grandma's house, we would watch music videos. And when she got a computer, anytime I seen a name across anything, I would just Google it. And a lot of stuff was like in different languages and I would just spend hours scrolling on their websites and kind of just trying to dig into the culture. And that's always been my thing. And when I was in college, I was kind of broke, but I had a little bit of money. So I would go to the mall and see stuff. And I'm like, I wouldn't wear any of this. Mm. So essentially, I was just wearing plain T-shirts, and it just got to the point where it's like I need to start my own thing now. Right, and necessity, you know, brings innovation. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what didn't you know when you started this this uh, this brand and this business that you that you know today? I think my biggest lesson is really that you cap your own success. And I feel like that's a lesson that every entrepreneur should know. Even when you're in corporate America, mm -hmm. you cap your own success. So for example, if I'm, if, I, if I'm selling something and it's doing extremely well, but I only offer 20 to the public and I'm capable of selling more, I'm capping my success by only stocking 20 because I could have stocked 100. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Also, when you're not exercising every option to promote yourself and promote your brand, you capping your success as well. Because I didn't know about all the platforms there was for for marketing. I wasn't really huge on Instagram ads and stuff back then. And I wish I would have fully tapped into that world when I first started because now um, I exercise all those avenues and it's like, the amount that my brand has grown since I started using those things is exponential. So, um, in terms of the avenues that you particularly use to just stay up in terms of marketing outside of Instagram, what do you uh, you partake in? Do you do the pop up shops? Do you do um, yeah? So you got to be. Uh, I do pop up shops uh, probably once or twice a year, but. One of the biggest things that I realized is that you gotta kind of be tapped in with the culture in your city or your surrounding area. Um, just getting out networking, meeting people, uh, shaking hands, talking to other people that have brands. I would say besides Instagram, that's really my biggest marketing tool is just word of mouth, trying mm -hmm. to meet as many people as possible because kind of when you're small, a lot of people like your brand through um, association. Well, people always prefer, like brands because of association, but you'll be surprised, like you'll see you get cool with somebody, they buy something, and next thing you know, they friends when I have it now um, because of that association. So, word of mouth. I feel that. I feel that. Hey, the word of mouth is it's always been strong. It always will be. You know, yes, sir. What is, the, what is the biggest victory you've had so far? The biggest, I think, like, my biggest victory would probably be um, I had 
a music artist, a guy like a boy band. I had, inter excuse me, I've had international artists hit me up as well. But it was like this dude in the boy band. He got like 700K on Instagram. The group that he in is like, they got like almost 2 million on Instagram. And he tapped in with me for some clothes and really was pushing it. And it was like, it was crazy. Cause he got like a whole style blog page too. And he would wear my stuff and post it on the style blog page. And I brought my brand a lot of traffic. So to even be on the level to where somebody with that stature would even want to connect with me was huge. Mm. Now are you looking to expand or are you still, uh, cause right now this is a solo operation, right? Where do you see this in the next five years? Do you see it taking over your life or do you still see it being, uh, you know, just your, your thing? No, uh, my brand is not going to be a love child in five years. I'm actually working on expanding now. So what I was just saying earlier, the quarantine really sat me down to realize that I was capping my own success mm -hmm. and also being frugal with my, what's the word? With Frugal with my money, basically, kind of like, I want to save here and save there. And I just got to hop in that water and take that risk. So big investments into the brand, I feel like in five years, I'm not going to be doing anything else with clothes. Yeah. Not anything else, but, but I don't plan on being in corporate America. Like, this would be my main source of income. Because essentially, once you start moving in a certain, at a certain pace, it's like, this is going to consume too much time for me to even understand something else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, just pushing it to get there. Now, how do you mentally prepare yourself to get ready to make that jump? You know what I'm saying? That, that shit... That's the I think that's the biggest reason why a lot of motherfuckers always write out a business plan but never can make that first jump to even get the business off the ground. You know what I'm saying? So you've made several jumps now and you're gonna make this next big one. Like how do you mentally prepare each time to make another jump? Um first and foremost, you can't tell everybody your business. Because you would tell somebody, uh, oh, yeah, I plan on doing this. And they go say that's stupid. And they go kill your, your soul. Um, so first, don't tell nobody your business. Second, you got to be certain within yourself. And you got to give yourself those pep talks consistently. Like, hey, when we do this, we go do it. Or I know when I do this, we go sell out. And you got to keep pushing that vision in your head to make yourself believe it. And that's just going to give you all the confidence you need to drive forward. So... Those just those mental pep talks for myself really give me that. And also looking back at my past, it's like anything that I ever tried to conquer before, uh, I overcame it. So, and then that's, um, that's what it takes. when you, when you were prepping for your business, uh, did you actually do the business plan? Did you write it out like a you know, a full business plan? Yeah. So I by the way, I just graduated from Eastern Michigan with a uh, my BBA in finance. So. I was I was big into the numbers. I was big into the business plan. I had a marketing plan. I had everything laid out um, with my business. So I wrote out my business plan in a a quick deep. One of my one of the notes of my business plan was like, "Don't try to cater to Detroit because Detroit is a bandwagon city." So it was like, "Hey, go get your clout in the rest of the country and the rest of the world, and then Detroit go come eventually." Right. And um, I want to say that's working. And Detroit showed me love, but it's like. A lot of other places show me more love than Detroit. Right. Now, how do you think that, uh, uh, where is that very, is that bandwagon behavior common um, in er other urban areas? I feel like everybody has a favorite. Every city has a favorite. Um, but you would be surprised. Um, where some places, I was always an individual. And I feel like people in Detroit, I don't want to say this and sound like off, but like, they kind of don't really feel for that individuality like other people, other places like feel for it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that creative connection too. Like everybody would rather have the same t-shirt on or the same shoes or the same kind of jeans. Where's the individuality? There mm -hmm. isn't any. So. I think when you go to LA, New York, certain places like that, it's, you know, it's always gonna be a fan favorite everywhere you go. Right. But it's like, it's always that that group of people that crave that, oh, I need something new that don't nobody else got yet. 
because then when I wear this, it's going to pop. That's like what I was on in high school. It's like whenever I could come up on something and then nobody else have it or a new brand, I was on it. Like, and then I go out and people be like, hey, where you get that from? I used to like that. And I feel like Detroit just wasn't there with it. Um, who is somebody that inspired you throughout this this whole thing, this journey that you've been on? We live in the, in the age of social media, so it's designers on Instagram. It's one designer, his name is, um, his Instagram name is Will I Am, and he has a brand called Benny Peru. And he was starting his brand, well, revamping his brand when I was starting my brand. He was selling coats. And I remember when I got my first drop in, um, I was just selling, selling like crazy. And then like my second drop came in, I was selling like crazy. And then he came out with like, I don't know, probably an infinite amount of coats and was selling them like crazy. And it was his first time doing this and everybody was out with him and he was getting bold covers, invites to, uh, to fashion shows in Paris and in Milan. And I, I kind of watched his, his, his career go from, I don't want to say zero, but like down here to through the roof, mm-hmm. all through Instagram. And it's like, he was like showing step by step in the process. And I feel like that's really my biggest inspiration. So now where he got a brick and mortar store, he live in Atlanta and be back and forth and just live in a crazy penthouse. And he was telling a story like when I was first doing this, I was scraping by in Atlanta, living in the studio apartment, working at Saks, not really making no cheese, got fired from my job. And my manufacturer was like, hey, we need $10,000 by this day. And it was like a couple days before he needed to send it if you want to have your order ready. And he found a way. He found a will, found a way, and that's, I watched that change his life. So I'm like, this next year, I always think like this next job could really change my life. Right. So. Okay, we got a couple more, couple more here. Uh, who do you really want to work with? Right now? Mm-hmm. Officially nobody. Okay. Hey. hey I'm a, I feel like, uh, I haven't found the right people that I want to work with, but it's also, I want to establish my brand a lot more before I associate it with somebody else. Mm. Um, whether they're the same size as me, bigger or smaller, because I don't want to kind of collab with somebody smaller and then I, I'll pull them up. There needs to be equal leverage. There needs to be adequate leverage in that relationship. Like if it's not really going to do anything for me, I'm not really interested in working with people as far as like collabing with brands. Um, and I don't really have any specific photographers and videographers that I want to work with. Um, not right now. Not right now, actually. All right. Now, we on we on a solo mission probably for the next year, and then after that, I'm, I'm gonna be ready to open up more. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, going back to this Detroit thing, and, and specifically the, the black businesses that we have in Detroit. You know, they all kind of have a, a stigma of being um, um, overhyped and underprepared, like all constantly out of stock or, or uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever, unprofessional, right? Right. How, how have you broken through that mode in ensuring that you have a certain level of professionalism in everything that you do? You know that Jay-Z lyric where he say, I'm not a businessman, I'm a business man. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like I always wanted to be here to have my own business. And I, I groom myself through life to always be this. I worked a number of retail jobs. Um, I'm new to corporate America, but I always had to play the professional role. So it was like, and I, I also took note when I would go somewhere, you could go to the mall and walk into a store and they if they don't say something to you or they not introducing you to product or you know, like you you if I know the cues that I don't like when I'm shopping, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna provide that experience to somewhere else. I mean to somebody because essentially when I go to that store and they don't even greet me, I'm trying to get stuff, they not, you know, they not helping me out, I'm not coming back. So I feel like a lot of people just feel like their products are strong and people will come, keep coming back, but you only go get so many chances. So um, that's kind of what uh, I just try to say on my P's and Q's, man. Even with like shipping times and all that, 
I'm I'm not slacking. That's the best of your your business, cause I mean, hey, your product only gonna get you so far. Right. We gotta show the people love. Right. And that's leading into what is your ultimate tip for people who want to start their own business and become entrepreneurs? I'm a ramble. I'm gonna tell y'all about my business journey. Um, I came up with my business idea um, in March, and I didn't start selling anything until September. But from March to September, I was working on my brand every single day as far as writing business plans, learning prices, uh, figuring out how much manufacturing was gonna cost, working on the website. And the last thing I did was put my money into my brand. So I feel like a lot of people that even ask me for like business advice or, or, or questions regarding the business and how to start, it's like, you need to have a solid plan and have everything mapped out. And the last thing you should be doing is investing in product. Cause you don't want to invest in product and not know what you're doing and not have a plan because now you're just sitting on dead stock. Where if you actually took your time and did the work beforehand, as soon as you get the product in, the last step is just to sell it. You know exactly how to sell it. You know all that your avenues of marketing, you know your website is set up and now it's time to roll. It also gives you more time to prepare as well. But I think that's like the biggest advice I could really give to anybody, man. It's like, it's really when you want to start your business, just have everything mapped out. And then also when you start your business, don't cheap out on advertising and marketing. Make sure you got good visuals. Don't just go to dog because he's cheaper. If the quality of work is not there, don't mess with it. Because you got to give your brand. That's what people go remember you by. Initially, the first impression will carry the weight for a long time. So you want to come clean and you want to spend, spend those marketing dollars. That's how the world will see you. Okay. Okay. Now we're Malik Thomas here, uh, founder of the Crown Collection. Where can we find you, websites, Instagram, Facebook? Where, where, where can we find it? Find me, uh, my website is shop, crwn.us. Um, our Instagram is the crwn collection. Yeah, those are my main two avenues. So you can get at me on there. You can uh, see my personal page on Instagram at mvleek.t. Hit me with any questions. I'm pretty transparent with everything. So I'm open. Appreciate you. Appreciate your time, man. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Shout out Thanks to you, man. Thanks for having me, man. Shout out to you for having me, man. And shout out to all the entrepreneurs coming up. You got to believe in yourself. And if you if you got that vision, don't be scared to leap, man. Okay. Don't be scared. Okay.